I was walking in the woods near my house recently with my family, and we saw a large white goat. It clearly didn't belong there. We live in a suburban neighborhood, so I dutifully called animal control, who told me to call the police. And that's where we stand on that. I'll keep you posted. Today we are doing Marigold, the Foo Fighters, you know, Nirvana sort of segue with Dave Grohl singing. Um, and of course, Foo Fighters do it now, and they do it in standard tuning, but Nirvana does it in half-step down detuned tuning. So if you want to play it along to Nirvana, all your strings go a half step down. And Pedro also had a good question. He said when he starts to try to sing while he's playing, it sort of falls apart. So at the end, I'll show you how to break it down for this or for any song so that you can sort of uh, coordinate that a little better. I hope. I'll try. Anyways, here we go. This should be a quick add to your repertoire, please, to make a power chord on the A string 7th fret. So A7, D9, G9, and since this is an E chord... <laughs> And the song's mostly in the key of E. We can have the E and the B strings ringing out in Coldplay-esque fashion. And you're going to give it two downs. No low E string. That'll sort of take over the party. We don't want that. Two downs. Two percussive strums. Down up quick. And then fourth fret, C sharp. Same pattern on B, second fret. And C. And that is half the song. To where we, we left off on C, right? Now move your shape down to G and add your middle finger on the G string fourth fret, and we can still hear those two notes ringing out. G, two frets higher is A. Back up to our original first E. Down to C sharp fourth fret. And then end the whole thing on C. I'll do it one more time through, and then we'll talk about the other thing. Chorus. and nobody else. Here's how you break this or any other song down so that it doesn't break down when you're trying to play it and sing it at the same time. First step, slow it down. Second step, break it into its little beats, little parts in which something may or may not happen, but certainly there's the opportunity for something to happen. For instance, in this song, the first two things that happen are two down strums, right? And then a percussive strum, but let's just dumb it down to one down for now, so we can get comfortable with where the words go. So it'll be... He's. He's happens on the percussive strum. He's. Do that 60,000 times until you can do it hanging upside down, blindfolded in a cave, comfortably. He's. He's. Go as slow as you need to. Then, of course, the very next thing that happens is this fourth fret one. But no words happen on that. The word there happens immediately after that. So now we have there. There. <laughs> I'm starting to feel silly. But that's okay. Nobody's watching but you, Pedro. Ready? Together. Nice and slow. He's there. He's there. And then the rest of the song, or the rest of the verse anyways, is much easier than that. That was the hard part, and I'm betting that's the part you were having trouble with, because it kind of happens more on the beat. Cause I want it all, or in case I want it, or whatever it is. Uh, yeah, so. He's there, in case I want it all. The rhythm of the right hand doesn't change for those two, that's important to note. He's there. It's easier because the want happens right on the chord change. I think that's the only tricky part because the rest of it, there's 
nothing tricky about the rhythm. You just strum away while you sing it. Which is, you know, easier said than done, but there's no kooky rhythm and no something happening when something else doesn't happen. So that is my tip for you, Pedro. Slow it down into tiny pieces. Ease there. Notice where singing happens. You might write it out, uh, you know, and put little symbols for yourself wherever the strums go compared to the lyrics if you're a visual kind of person like that. But yeah, that works for absolutely any song. He's there. He's there. In case I want it all. And the verse doesn't really change at all. That's kind of the rhythm. And the cool thing about, you know, Rocky pop songs and poppy rock songs is that once you get sort of two chunks of things down, you've pretty much got the song because the words change, uh, but the melody and the rhythm stay the same. So I hope that was helpful, Pedro, and nobody else. <laughs> so Pedro, alone, I will see you next time with more stuff. Goodbye. <laughs>